What up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's No Name back at it again with another Giants video. Uh, welcome back. I hope you guys are staying safe out there, washing your hands for 20 seconds and whatnot. Listen, so I already heard the feedback on the top five list that I put out. I will definitely, next time I do a list like that, I'll definitely incorporate my commentary again. And I was just trying out something new. It's always good to get the feedback from you guys and don't worry, I'll have more commentary, you know, more of my thoughts in there rather than it just letting it be a list video. But what I want to talk about today is a very intriguing and honestly a question that I don't think anybody knows the answers to and that is who is Gettleman going to draft? Who is Dave Gettleman, the general manager of the New York Giants? Who is he going to draft in the first round? And I want to like take a look at 2018 and 2019. Of course, those are the past two seasons in which Gellman has been our general manager. Really 2018 was the year the new regime took over. 2019, in my opinion, was the year the rebuild actually started. And I want to go back and look at how his free agency in those two years affected what he did in the draft. Now, before I get into it, all of this can be completely wrong. Like we really have absolutely no idea what he's gonna do. He could just go and take the best player available, which I believe if Isaiah Simmons lands at number four, which still is, you know, it's kind of like, it's not, it's not even known if he's gonna land there. Detroit could just shake everything up and take Simmons. But if Isaiah Simmons lands at four, he would be the best player available and Gettleman can do that, which he has done before. Or he could draft for need, which he has also done before which I'd like to say in 2018 and in 2019, and Gelman has said so itself, it's a beautiful thing when need lines up with the best player available. In 2018, when we had the second overall pick, Saquon Barkley was the best player in the draft. Nobody disputed that. Uh, he, it was a known fact that people considered him the best player in the draft, and people forget that running back was a need for the Giants. Was it the biggest need? You could certainly argue that we needed an edge rusher more, but as I'll get in with the free agency, we did at the time, we weren't looking for any offensive linemen because we had just signed Nate Solder. We had re-signed a, a couple guys and whatnot. So offensive linemen, while it was in the question, was not considered the biggest need, but running back definitely was because up until that 2018 season, really since, I want to say 2010, the Giants really had no run game present in their offense. And it was a combination of both. They didn't really have any running backs that can do the job. And also the offensive line was terrible in run blocking as well as pass blocking, but we had no run game for about almost 10 years on that Giants team and running back was a need. People forget that. So lean need lined up with best player available. The same thing happened the following year in the 2019 draft where uh, Dave Gettleman at the time was a controversial pick in Daniel Jones. Since then, I'm sure like 99% of Giants fans has come around on it. DJ performed extremely well his rookie year, showed a lot of flashes, showed that in my opinion he can be a franchise quarterback, and quarterback was definitely a need for the Giants in 2019. Once again though, you could definitely argue, was it the biggest need? Uh, when you consider the fact that 2019 is the year they kicked up the rebuild, yes it becomes the biggest need, it surpasses an offensive lineman, it just surpasses an edge rusher, surpasses a safety and whatnot, surpasses a wide receiver definitely. It's, it's the quarterback, it's the most important position in the game. It is your biggest need if you don't have a franchise quarterback. And Daniel Jones wasn't the best player available, but he was, in my opinion, the best quarterback available. So, you know, in that sense, he didn't really select the best player available, but he did draft for need. So it, so, so it shows that Gelman will draft for need if he wants to, which in this case, in the 2020 draft, could be drafting an offensive tackle that is our biggest need but let's get into the 2018 offseason right here let's take a look at how it shaped up the move the Giants made made that offseason and let's see how it shaped up towards the draft so I'm getting this from blue big blue interactive.com which is also where I'm getting my 2019 moves from it's actually a bit harder than you'd expect to just go back and find a list of the moves that the Giants made in 2018 offseason but that was the year that they cut a lot of people because once again a new regime Pat Shermer came in James Betcher came in uh Dave Gettleman obviously came in and there were some moves that just like to say right now that I didn't like I didn't like cutting Romeo Aquara I didn't like um trading JPP I mean really it got rid of our pass rush immediately we kept Vernon on but he was injured the following year and we saw how that turned out but Okwara was somebody really young. I think he was a rookie in 2016 or 2015, one out of the two years. 
and he performed really well when he was given the chance because JPP was injured in 2016. But you know, that was a year we cut a lot of people from the defense specifically because um, after that great year to 2016 defense had, because James Betcher, which was one of the worst things about him is that he needed players to fit his scheme in order for the scheme to work. So if you didn't have anybody that fit it, the defense would just look really bad on the field and that's what played out for the next two years. But some of the major signings we made are the following. Kareem Martin, who nobody likes. We picked up Nate Solar from the Patriots, which at the time seemed like a good move. There was definitely, you know, fans out there and critics out there that you kind of knew from the beginning he was being overpaid, but he was one of the best tackles available on the market. The other guy Giants were looking at was Daryl Williams, and I think he went to the Panthers. I could be wrong, but that was the only other tackle really they were looking at, and Nate Solar ended up being uh, one of the best, if not the best tackles available, and so they had to overpay for him. They signed Patrick Omame, another move that seemed like it would be really good because the previous year, he had a career year in run blocking with the Jaguars. They got Curtis Riley, uh, Cody Latimer, Michael Thomas, Scott Simonson, uh, Offensive Guard and Zach Karen, Connor Barwin, uh, Leonard Johnson. Now some of these names we recognize because they saw the field, others we completely do not. Obviously people remember uh, Jonathan Stewart, I think you know this was after the draft if I'm not wrong. B.W. Webb, Teddy Williams, Josh Morrow, uh, William Gay, this is when Alex Tanney came on. A bunch of other uh, really defensive players on these one year, two year contracts that didn't really make an impact on the team because they were really depth players but some of them saw the field in the starting position because once again, we didn't have anybody to fit that uh, Arizona Betcher system on the defensive side and that was what, that was one of the main reasons the defense obviously failed. Now, if we look at this, we see that they addressed offensive line in Nate Solder and Patrick Omame. We see that they at least tried to address the defense in um, Kareem Martin, in Michael Thomas, Connor Barwin, uh, Josh Morrow, specifically Josh Morrow and Kareem, um, Kareem Martin came from that Arizona defense in which they had success over there with the better system. So we see that they addressed these parts of the team that were considered needs in free agency. And then when they got to the draft, they drafted the one player or the one position they didn't address in free agency. Because like I said, I believe Jonathan Stewart was signed after the draft. And even if he was signed before the draft, everybody knew he was going to be a backup because at that point, people were thinking we're taking Saquon and that's exactly what happened. We took Saquon Barkley, the one position that was not really addressed in free agency, but was addressed in the draft. And it was the perfect position of need lining up with best player available. Same thing could happen here. Giants so far in free agency addressing mostly the defense. Once again, kind of revamping the defense. Hopefully this time it works out. We got, in my opinion, better players on that side of the defense. We definitely took some, you know, depth players on the offensive side, the offensive side of the ball, but we did not take a, you know, starting level person on the offensive tackle side. You could argue wide receiver as much as I would hate if the Giants go wide receiver. But there's really a mirror here, a parallel in signing a Jonathan Stewart, a uh, backup running back, and then signing a Cam Fleming, somebody who, you know, maybe is going to be a depth backup tackle. So uh, that could be one way we see them taking an offensive tackle. Of course, another way is while we address middle linebacker, we're still missing a coverage linebacker, and that need would be fulfilled by best player available in uh, Isaiah Simmons. Now let's look at 2019. Now in 2019, the Giants let go of quite a few players, a lot of them from the previous signing year like Josh Romaro, B.W. Webb and all that. Obviously the big trades, or I guess let me start off with the big walkers with that. We let go of Landon Collins, who then went on to sign a massive deal with the Redskins. And we traded Odell Beckham to the Browns for their first round pick, a third round pick, and Drabil Peppers. And we also traded... Uh, I forgot his name from the Dolphins. That's how much of an impact he had on this team, even though he was our best edge rusher at the time. We traded him for uh, Kevin Zeitler, the offensive guard, one of the best offensive guards in the game, who's still playing at a high level, and I, I expect him to play at a high level for like the next two or three years. And looking back at it now, I'm sure a lot of fans would agree that we kind of won that trade. There's definitely those out there who think the Browns won it, but the Giants got better players in my opinion, and it's the sum of the parts that uh, really beat out the whole of the one player in Odell. And Olivier Vernon, that's his name. I actually had to go back and look. Like if you guys see the list, I'll probably leave a link or I'll put a picture of it up. It's like so many names on here. It's actually kind of difficult to find it. But 
we won those trades. That's just me. We also, that was the year we had a way better free agency than 2019. We got Golden Tate. Some people think we overpaid for him. I think it's a fair contract. I would like for Golden Tate to play out all four of his years on the Giants, but we don't know what the future holds. He could fall off given his age, or the Giants could just let go of him. We got Marcus Golden on what last year I described as a very low risk, high reward deal, and it worked out for the better. Golden came in, became our back best pass rusher, got 10 sacks on the season. The first 10 sack player since JPP in 2015 or 2014, I think. We also signed a backup running back in Rod Smith, because at this point we were looking for somebody to run through the tackles for Saquon. This was a deal that didn't work out. And defensive end in Olsen Pierre, another former Cardinal uh, for the better system. Now we all we picked up Antoine Bethea, once again another former Cardinal for the Beth better system. Our right tackle in Mike Remmers, because we needed that position to be filled in. A backup uh, tight end. We picked up David Mayo. Um, I think this was after the 49ers cut him and Dion Buchanan later on in the year. So if we go through it all in all, while it is a better free agency than the previous year, there were still holes to fill. But once again, they addressed offensive line. They addressed wide receiver after they uh, traded Odell. They addressed edge rusher and Marcus Golden and Olsen Pierre. And they addressed another backup running back. They tried to address safety. They tried to get some more depth players from the tight end position. But the main positions of need, just like the previous year, specifically edge rusher and offensive line, were somewhat addressed, or at least they tried to tackle it. Had success with edge rusher and Marcus Golden, not so much on the offensive line with Mike Remmers. Now at this time, we all have to expect that the Giants knew they were going to take a quarterback. We have to expect that Dave Goldman knew he was going to target the successor to Eli, the next one franchise quarterback at this point with the moves that he's making. That would explain why he went offensive line in Mike Remmers. That would explain why he was trying to kind of revamp the defense a little bit and get some more help for Saquon. Get Eric Thomason, who was a blocking tight end, to get in there and help the offensive line, you know, continue to retain Red Elson and whatnot. It would explain some of these moves. And once again, you know when you're taking a quarterback. It just doesn't happen months before. It happens probably like a year in advance, right? So in that case, they took Daniel Jones, who was more of a need player than best player available. Once again, he was the best quarterback available, but the best player available at that point was no doubt Josh Allen, the edge rusher out of Kentucky. It was why a lot of Giants fans went crazy when we didn't take him, because he was by far looked at as not only the best player available, but probably the best player in the draft. It was really a toss up between him and Nick Bosa. Obviously, as their rookie years pass, I think Bosa just completely wiped any doubters if there were, but Josh Allen out of Kentucky would have came in and would have been a player that helped out this defense a lot right now, but we wouldn't have Daniel Jones. We would not have our future franchise quarterback, and it was a good pick because picking a quarterback, it's probably the hardest position to, to evaluate as an NFL GM. You're picking somebody to lead the team be the face of the team, be the guy that takes you into the playoffs and wins you games for the next 15 years at least. That's not very easy to do. We see it many, many times. I'll use the Cleveland Browns for an example. They went through like what, 10 quarterbacks in like eight years or something. It's like a quarterback a year for the Cleveland Browns because it's not easy to find that, but Gettleman did find it. Uh, it was more need than best player available, but I will say, and I will iterate again, it was the best quarterback available. So we see once again, what this guy did in the first round of the draft for the past two years were positions he didn't address in free agency, but he still went best player available when needed as shown with Saquon. So what do I think is going to happen? I really think that the Giants are going to take offensive tackle in uh, the draft coming these coming weeks. I, I hope that we trade down, maybe get some more assets uh, for a quarterback needy team, or maybe a team who sees a player that they love so much they don't think it's going to get to them. Uh, the ideal position would be the Raiders. I did a video on this. I think it was like called like uh, draft scenarios or something like that. Where if we trade down with the Raiders, we get the 12th overall pick, the 19th overall pick, and maybe like a future third or something. And we'll be in prime position in the middle of the draft there to still get one of the top four offensive tackles at 12. And maybe, you know, one of those, uh, the better second tier edge rushers at 19 or even like a safety at 19. There's a lot of things you could do with that 19th overall pick and then still have your second, your early second round pick and address another need there. That would be like the dream scenario, but I really think we're gonna go offensive tackle. And then the caveat is again, I wouldn't be surprised if we go Isaiah Simmons, because he would be the best player available. 
Let me know what you guys think. I just want to sh sort of show what happened in the past and how it could probably help predict the future. But who knows, man? Put your thoughts down below. What do you guys think Dave Gellman is going to do come April? I'm out. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Yeah.